everybody, it's me, Allie, from Baking a Moment. Thank you so much for clicking over today. If you maybe saw in my stories or in one of my uh, posts yesterday on Facebook that we are gonna be doing snowball cupcakes today. So I'm really excited because yesterday was like a nice warm day. I think it got up into the 70s. It felt like spring. I had like flip flops on and everything. Um, and now today is kind of gray and gloomy, so it's a little bit of a bummer, but we're going to do our best to get into the spring spirit with these um, cute little snowball cupcakes. I, for some reason, I always associate these with Easter. I don't know what it is, but they just seem very Eastery to me. So we're getting in the Easter spirit today. Um, if you're not familiar with the idea of snowballs, um, there used to be, they used to be like a little... Thing that you could like a store-bought little treat where I live in the Philadelphia area we have tasty cakes so it was a tasty cakes treat um, and it was basically just like a fluffy ball of marshmallow um, that was coated in colorful coconut and the center was like a, a chocolate cake so I had the idea to kind of convert it into um, a cupcake recipe so that's what you see here and it's a chocolate cake on the bottom with marshmallow frosting and tinted um, coconut. So very cute, very festive for spring and for Easter. So hopefully you enjoy this recipe. Um, maybe bookmark it for later as the weather starts to warm up. I think Easter is actually coming early this year. Um, I want to say it's like right at the end of March or so. So this is a good one to book bookmark if you... Um, are hosting Easter dinner or even if you're not hosting even if you're just showing up at somebody else's house where there's gonna be a lot of kids or a lot of people with um, sweet tooth <laughs> make them snowball cupcakes so let me just put these aside and we'll get started on uh, the recipe I want to mention that Jen is here as always say hi Jennifer Hi everyone. <laughs> Um, she's um, behind the scenes. She's looking at both of these feeds, Instagram and Facebook, and reading through your comments, and she'll be shouting them out to me as we go along. So if you have any questions, feel free to just drop them in a comment, and we'll do our best to answer. Um, last week, I found that uh, a lot of people really love telling me where they're watching from. So if you feel like giving a shout out, let us know where you're from. And also, um, let us know. It might be really fun to hear about what you've been baking lately. So let me know what was the last recipe that you baked. I would love to hear about it. The last recipe that I baked was these chocolate cupcakes last night. Um, but I also put up a new post this morning on bakingamoment.com for um, cinnamon crumb cake. And it came out really, really good. That was my breakfast this morning. A nice slice of cinnamon crumb cake with a cup of coffee. It was a great way to start the day. So let me know what you've been up to. What have you been baking lately? Um, and if you want to bake along, the recipe is, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, the recipe's at the top of the post. I just put it right in there, put the link right in there. So you can go check it out, the Snowball Cupcakes. And if you're watching on Instagram, then you're gonna to wanna to go to bakingamoment.com and at the search window at the tippy top, just enter in snowball cupcakes and you'll find the recipe there. So what do you say? Should we get started? Let's talk about what you're gonna to need to make these snowball cupcakes. The first thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need some chocolate cupcakes. I'm not gonna bake the chocolate cupcakes today because that would make for a really, really long <laughs> recipe demo. I have them already baked. Um, and this is my Simply Perfect Chocolate Cupcake Recipe, again, on bakingmoment.com. It's my favorite chocolate cake recipe. It's the only chocolate cake recipe I ever use. I love it because it's moist and it tastes really chocolatey and it's really easy to make. You only need one bowl to make it. So it's my number one top favorite um, chocolate cupcake recipe. And besides that, we're also going to need some egg whites, some sugar, a little bit of water, corn syrup, um, coconut, and we, I have three different colors of gel paste food coloring. I have pink, yellow, and blue. You can use any colors you want, but these are my favorites. And for equipment, you're going to need um, 
some toothpicks to get the color out of the little jars. We're gonna use an ice cream scoop, measuring cup, bowl, silicone spatula, um, a small pot, and a candy thermometer. I hope you have a candy thermometer. Um, and I'm gonna use my stand mixer. So before I go any further, is there anybody I should be saying hi to, Jen? Um, we have um, mine on Facebook. We hi, have a mine. whole bunch of people on Instagram. So way too many to name. Hey, people Instagram people. We <laughs> England's Turkey. Um, we have someone from Lyon, France. Ooh. We got some people from the States, Ohio. Um, yeah, just awesome. keep on joining and let me know where you're from, guys. All right, yeah. Thanks so much again for clicking over. I have so much fun doing these live recipe demos with you guys every week. I'm so happy that you're watching. All right, so let's get started. The first thing, Jen's moving my camera on. Sorry. <laughs> the first thing that we're going to start with is um, we're going to start we're going to start with the frosting because it takes a little while to make. So. Um, I have my small pot here, and I'm going to set it on this burner, and I was joking with Jen earlier that I wasn't really thinking when I picked out this recipe <laughs> to make today that it involves boiling hot sugar, so <laughs> hopefully <laughs> we don't have a disaster on our hands today. I really hope I don't get hot sugar on myself, because if I do, it's going to hurt <laughs> really bad. <laughs> So this is some of the sugar. Um, if you check out the recipe on bakingload.com, you'll see that the, that the sugar is meant to be divided. So this is some of the sugar going into my little pot here. And we have a little bit of water here too. Oops, no we don't. I forgot to put water in my measuring cup. <laughs> Let me fill that up real quick. Maybe I didn't forget. Maybe it just evaporated because I set everything out last night. Can a, can a quarter cup of water evaporate in one night? I wonder. Mm -hmm. So that's our water. And then we also have some corn syrup here. <laughs> so this stuff is pretty sticky. And that's why I need the rubber or the silicone spatula to get it out of the container easily. So this is just going to um, heat up and get boiling. Be very careful, it's very dangerous. Um, I wouldn't do this if you have like little kids around bumping into you or <laughs> you know pestering you for stuff. You really kind of have to keep your eye on it. And it would help if you plug in your hot plate that would be helpful. <laughs> I'm just going to start it on kind of a low heat just because I know that this thing fires up really, really fast. It doesn't take long to get hot at all. So, and this candy thermometer, I kind of think that this is a bit of a necessity when you're making something like this. Um, but luckily, they're not that expensive. You can buy it probably at your supermarket for a few dollars. Um, or you can order it online. Just go on like Amazon and search candy thermometer. Mine has a little clip on the back that I can clip to the side of my pot so I don't have to worry about it falling over and splashing me or anything like that. So um, we're gonna get this. The goal is to get it to the soft ball stage, which if you're familiar with candy making, there are a bunch of different stages. There's the thread stage, the soft ball stage, the firm ball stage, the hard ball stage, the soft crack stage, and the hard crack stage. So we're shooting for soft ball, which is 240 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So let's just let that go. The light's on, so I know it's working. <laughs> we'll give it a few minutes um, and let that come up to a bubble. I'm just going to push it away a little bit because I don't want to accidentally bump it and hurt myself. <laughs> so um, while that's going, let's get started on our egg whites. And I'm going to grab my stand mixer here. We've been doing a lot with egg whites over the last few weeks. We did uh, raspberry meringue sandwiches and we did, what did we do last week? Do you remember? Uh -huh. 
no, 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 that was that Tuesday. What um, did we do for our live? I'm trying to remember. I feel like it had egg whites, right? Wasn't I whipping egg whites last week too? I thought last week was the meringues. No, because we did it before Valentine's Day. Anyway, whatever it was. Wow. We did something. <laughs> Short-term memory is not so yeah. good here. <laughs> you know what? A lot of recipes come through this kitchen, so you gotta be forgiving here. I make a lot of stuff. It's hard to keep track of it all. But we did something with egg whites, and, um, you know, sometimes people get a little freaked out at the idea of whipping egg whites or making meringue. Um, there are some pitfalls, and we've discussed most of them. But um, I'll just go over it one more time. Why not? <laughs> Did you remember? Chocolate mousse. That's what it was. Chocolate mousse. Yeah, so that had whipped egg whites in it. Um, but yeah, some of the pitfalls are, you know, if, you're, if your bowl is greasy, they won't whip up right. Or if you put your sugar in too fast or too slow, you might run into some trouble. Or... Um, we also talked about how it's helpful if your egg whites are at room temperature. They'll tend to whip up a little bit better if they're at room temperature. So last night I set my egg whites out um, on the counter, just uncovered. They were fine. They're, so they're a little bit warmer now, so hopefully they will whip up a little faster. So I'm going to get that started. And just FYI, I'm only doing a half batch. Um, because I did the other half last night so that I could show you what it looks like when it's done. So you might notice that the quantities are a little bit different than what it reads on the recipe card, and that's why. So this is a half batch, so I have three egg whites in here, and I'm just gonna um, whip them up until they get foamy, and then we're gonna start adding in some sugar. So this is a meringue. Um, it's very marshmallowy, so I think it works really well for the snowball cupcakes. Um, but it's not actually marshmallow. It's actually called an Italian meringue. So um, I like it. It's got that all that same flavor um, that marshmallow does. Um, it's got that same kind of fluffy texture and that vanilla taste and sweetness. But um, it's a little easier to work with, I think, as a frosting for a cupcake. It works really well. Sorry, I'm distracted. Jen is messing up. I'm the very again. sorry, but it's bugging me that I can't see everything on Facebook. So sorry, Facebook okay. people. Now you're cutting the top of my head off. Okay. And I see that my sugar syrup is starting to come to a boil here. Why don't I see if I can move this off to the side and pull this back out again so that you can see. It's steaming away. There we go. Steaming away, and it's become really like a thin, thin liquid. So I'm just going to keep my eye on that candy thermometer, and I'm watching again for the softball stage, which is 240 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just going to keep my eye on that, and make sure we pull it from the heat right when it hits that exact temperature. And this is going to give us a really, really nice Italian meringue. So are there any questions right now that I can answer or anybody want to talk about what they've been baking lately? I love talking about baking, so let's hear it. <laughs> actually, I do have a question. Um, well, actually, we just have some folks who just joined, so hey guys. we're repeating what we're making. Snowball cupcakes. And here. Um, here um, one. So I guess, um, is it suitable for vegetarian <laughs> non alcoholics? <laughs> so, no alcohol. There's no alcohol in this one. Um, if you're vegetarian, I'm trying to think, it should work. If you're vegan, it's not a vegan recipe. It does have eggs and dairy. So um, so not for a vegan, but would definitely work for vegetarian. There's no meat or anything like that, so you should be okay. I'm just gonna turn down. This thing really does get really hot, really fast. My temperature is, is really climbing quickly. So I'm going to try to like manage it and make sure that the syrup is ready at the same time as the egg whites. So that's what you got to do. You just have to like multitask a little bit. You got to be paying attention to two things at once so that you can totally handle it. It's not, it's not rocket science or anything. All right, so my whites are looking foamy and I have the remaining sugar here. Um, so I'm just going to start adding it in. Let's press it over a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit at a time. Can you guys see like 
it's really just like a few crystals are dropping in at a time. You really don't want to like dump it all in at once because it will deflate your egg whites. So we just do a little bit and I'm going to turn up the speed a little. And that sugar syrup is on fire. It's scaring me a little bit how fast that's happening. <laughs> We're almost up to 220 already. So we'll get these whites nice and fluffy and get all the sugar in. Any comments or questions? Um, <laughs> oh, she loves <laughs> coconut. <laughs> Coconut is her favorite. <laughs> One of these days she'll be writing a coconut cookbook. Just get oh, ready. Because right. that's going to be her thing. Yeah. Ooh, I want some s'mores more. cookies. That sounds good. <laughs> Were they chocolate cookies with like marshmallow and graham cracker in them? Oh my, you are a baker, aren't you? Way to go. My husband and I were in the car like a week or so ago. Don't ask me how he got on this topic, but he said, I think I like pie better than any other dessert. And I think everybody does, right? Like, doesn't everybody like pie better? And I was like, um, I don't know. I mean, I do like pie a lot. Don't get me wrong, but, um, I also really like chocolate cake. <laughs> I don't know if there's, I don't know if I could beat chocolate cake. Like to me, I think that might be the number one. Or, or maybe chocolate chip cookie. I guess it depends. Depends on the kind of mood I'm in. But um, like chocolate chip cookie with a glass of milk in the afternoon, there's just no better snack. There's no better snack in the whole world. And if you want to have like a really satisfying dessert at the end of a really wonderful meal, it's got to be chocolate cake, right? So I like your chocolate cake idea, Daniel. And I like the chicken pot pie idea, too. That's one of my son's favorite dinners to make, chicken pot pie. Comfort food. So just about got all the sugar added in here. I've just been going a little bit at a time, super, super slow, because we don't want to make those egg whites mad. They need enough time to dissolve but you don't want to add them too fast, or like I said, they're just going to deflate all your air out, and then you'll have really sad egg whites. So that's all in. I'm just going to turn it up and get this nice and stiff. We want a stiff peak here for this. We're almost there. And we're almost there with the syrup, too. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it up and let it, let it get to that temperature that we're looking for. So, just to review, again, we're making Italian uh, meringue. This is going to be the frosting for our snowball cupcakes. The recipe is on bakingthemoment.com. If you search in the top window, you just search snowball cupcakes. You'll find the recipe there. And this is a really great one for spring. I really love it for Easter because it's um, colorful and um, for some reason coconut. I think I'm not the only one, right? Coconut's like an Easter time kind of thing, right? Tell me I'm not alone in that idea, please. <laughs> I don't know why, but it seems to be. I feel like every year around Easter time, you see tons of recipes for coconut cake and all kinds of like coconut candies and macaroons and anything using coconut seems to always come out right around early spring. So this is a good recipe for that. All right, this looks good. I'm going to turn it down just because it's loud. Um, but these whites are definitely ready. Look at that. Look at that beautiful. Let me show you. Actually, they are not quite ready. I'm going to put them back on for a little while longer. Sorry. It's like, I thought they were ready, but they're not. The peak is, is it's nice and glossy, but it's, um, it's kind of flopping over. So we get some more air in there. Get it nice and stiff. And our sugar syrup, again, the sugar syrup is um, sugar corn syrup and water. 
and we're just cooking it on this little burner over here until it gets to the soft ball stage, which is um, 240 degrees Fahrenheit. So, got anything for me, Jennifer? That is so nice of you. Well, wow, my dad had colon cancer, so I can totally relate to that. That's wonderful that you're doing that to help them. And isn't that just so, I mean, when you feel so helpless, you know, there's something you can do. You can, you can help people out in that way, feed them, make them feel better inside. So God bless you for doing that. And all that food sounds amazing. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Anybody else? Quiet day, that's all right. Yeah. It's one of those kind of like gloomy days here. Like I said, yesterday was beautiful. The sun was shining. We had the windows open. And I don't know what happened, but overnight it all disappeared. And it's kind of gray and gloomy today. So I'm just trying to cheer myself out here in my kitchen by making some snowball cupcakes. Let's check on this meringue here. Let's take another look and see. Yeah, it's definitely stiffer. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for, you know, a pretty stiff peak. It holds its shape really well, and it's glossy, and it's white. It's really airy. So that's what we want. So we're, we're pretty much there. So now, let's check on the syrup. Look at that. It is hitting the softball stage as we speak. All right, so. Can you just repeat that, 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't ask me what that is Celsius. I think it is like around 100 and looks like around 115 Celsius. So if you're in Europe, that's what you're looking for. I'm going to unclip my, carefully unclip <laughs> my candy thermometer because um, we don't need that anymore. Sorry, I'm popping out of the frame here. I'm nervous. <laughs> You know what I should do? I think I say this in the recipe. To make it a little easier, less unwieldy, uh, pour the hot sugar syrup into a spouted vessel. Um, it will, it'll do two things. It'll be a little easier to pour, and I don't know if you can see that. That is boiling. Uh, but it'll also like help to cool it down a little bit and stop the cooking process. So let me get rid of this um, hot pan. <laughs> All right, and we're just gonna add the hot sugar into the whipped egg whites, and it's gonna kind of cook the egg whites a little bit. Um, but you want to do this on a low speed, because if you're on a high speed and it flies up at you, you're done for. You do not want 240 degree sugar on your person. Trust me. Not only will it burn, but it will stick, and that is not a nice feeling. So I'm just pouring this. My mixture's on pretty low speed, like I said, and I'm pouring this down the side of the bowl in a very slow, very thin stream. And as that goes in, it's going to cook the egg whites, it's going to um, stiffen up the mixture a lot, and again, we're still like getting more air into this. So it's going to make a nice marshmallowy kind of fluffy frosting for our snowball cupcakes. So here it goes, and it smells really good too, I might add. <laughs> I think I forgot to say at the beginning that we also are gonna put a little vanilla in here. I forgot to put it out on my tray, so I forgot to talk about it, but that is really the flavor that we associate with marshmallows. It's that, it's that vanilla flavor, that super sweet, fluffy vanilla taste. That's what, what marshmallow is really all about. So this is just about all in. Stick into my measuring cup a little bit. And if you do do this with the um, pouring it into a measuring cup first before you pour it into the meringue, just make sure that you're using a heat safe measuring cup. Don't use plastic or any, or like any kind of glass that's not treated to be heat safe. Because if you do, then it can crack. So, um, mine's, mine's by Pyrex, 
and it works great for that sort of thing. So if you have a Pyrex measuring cup, that's a really great thing to use. And mine is a cup. So if you're making this from the recipe on my website, you're going to be doing a double, like I mentioned earlier. So you might want to have like a two cup measure, make sure it all fits in there. This looks really good. Doesn't this look good? It looks just like marshmallows to me. I'm just going to grab um, some vanilla from my cupboard. No, it's in here, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. She's my best cheerleader. All right, so I'm just going to spike that with a little bit of vanilla. And if you have, um, I've been doing a lot lately with real, fret, like, whole vanilla beans. Um, I think they're, they're great to have around because they really add so much to a recipe. I don't know if they're... I don't know if I would use them for every baking recipe because they are a little expensive. They're about um, like four dollars a bean, but there are certain recipes that they are great for, <laughs> and this I think is one of them. If you really want to take this to the next level, try scraping those seeds from inside a whole vanilla bean into your in your Italian buttercream, and I think it would really elevate the flavors and make it like super super special. But if you don't have a whole vanilla bean, that's fine. Vanilla extract works really well too. So, oh my goodness, look at that gloriousness. Oh my word. <gasps> I'm not gonna stick my finger in it, even though I really want to. It, it might actually be kind of hot. So, <laughs> so it's tempting, but don't stick your finger in it until you know it's cool. The side of my bowl feels, um, feels pretty warm, so I think it might be hot. I will. <laughs> I will restrain myself. <laughs> so I'm going to move this out of the way and let it cool down a little bit. Excuse me one second. And I'll move the hot plate out of the way too, just so there's no accidents. <laughs> so the frosting is made, and the next thing that we get to do is we get to tip the coconut, and I think this is like one of the most fun parts of the whole recipe. If you have little kids, I think this would be a really great way to involve them, give them something fun to do. So I just have some um, sweetened coconut flakes here. Uh, I just bought these at the regular grocery store, and I have three um, zip top plastic baggies, and then we have our food coloring. So I'm going to put a little bit of coconut in each bag. We're doing half a batch again, so just a little bit. And I should talk a little bit about the kind of food coloring that I'm using. This is um, what they call icing color, or sometimes it's called gel color, or gel paste, or gel paste color. Um, it's what they use in cake decorating. You can buy it at, I, I don't really get it at my supermarket, but I can find it at like Walmart or um, any kind of craft store, any kind of store that has like a craft section or like a whole baking section. It's pretty easy to find. They're like a couple dollars a jar and they last a really, really long time. They're super, super concentrated. There's not a lot of water in them. And that's why I prefer them because you only need like the teeny tiniest drop and it doesn't dilute anything, it doesn't make anything too wet. So I would recommend um, picking up gel or icing collars, whatever you wanna call it, um, for this recipe. So, and here you can see like, it's just a little jar. It's, but this one's about half full. And I just grab a toothpick and I just take the tip of my toothpick in there just the tiniest bit. And I'm kinda of like wiping it, <laughs> wiping my toothpick with the coconut that's in the bag like that, and then seal up the bag, and then you just kind of go to town, you just kind of scrunch it around. It takes a few minutes. At first you'll see like the color is kind of all in one spot, but the more you scrunch it, the more it, um, it starts to blend all throughout. Any questions, Jennifer? Um, actually with the uh, meringue. Yeah. Um, so, um, Someone was asking if they make homemade vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're making the homemade vanilla, does that change? Would that change the flavor in the meringue? Or do you think that would be okay? I think that would be great, you know? I mean, I've never tasted your homemade vanilla, so I'm not sure, like, how strong it is. 
things or anything like that, but it, I mean, if it's like got a lot of really yummy vanilla flavor, then yeah, put it in. It sounds like it would be delicious. <laughs> and from the same person, what about vanilla bean taste? I love vanilla bean paste. Thank you for bringing that up. I, I don't have any in my cupboard right now. I need to get more, but that stuff is amazing. Um, if you're not familiar with vanilla bean paste, it's almost like a cross between um, vanilla extract and, um, and a whole vanilla bean. Like I was saying earlier, like split the vanilla bean, take the seeds out. Well, vanilla bean paste is like all the seeds in like this gooey kind of liquidy kind of um, mixture. Um, so you could just take like a teaspoon or have to do whatever the recipe calls for. Usually it, it can be subbed one one to one for vanilla extract. So you, know, you just pour it out and put it in your whatever and um, you get all those little vanilla bean flex. You get all that incredible vanilla flavor and aroma and it's easy, it's easy, and it's, it's actually, it's cheaper than buying whole vanilla beans too. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you for, the, for suggesting um, vanilla bean paste. If you see it in, on your store shelf, buy it. It's good stuff. <laughs> so I'm just gonna grab my bowl. My um, coconut is all tinted pink. Isn't it cute? <laughs> it just reminds me, you know, besides Easter, I think this would, be really great for a baby shower to have like a whole tray of um, snowball cupcakes. If you know what you're having, you know, maybe you have pink snowball cupcakes for a girl and blue for a boy, or you could do all three colors if you have like a pastel theme going on, that would be really cute. So there it is, I just put it into this bowl and then I have my cupcake right here. I'm gonna top it with some of that Italian buttercream and then I'm just gonna show you how to coat it. But I'm gonna grab the Italian buttercream that I made last night because it's not so hot and it's a little stiffer. So I'm just gonna grab it from my fridge. While you're doing that, um, yes, was also asking about other possible flavors. You could use cream and meringue other than just vanilla. That's a fun idea, yeah. You could do different flavors. Um, I think, um, just off the top of my head, um, I think almond extract would be really nice. I think um, orange would be nice. I love orange and chocolate together. Um, what else, what else? I don't know if mint would work so well with the um, coconut, but do you have any ideas, Jennifer? Mm, I don't know, I might try the mint. Yeah? You don't or mean? even any, any other toppings instead of coconut. To oh, make sure. Variations even more. You know what I mean? And like you could do chopped color. nuts or, yeah, anything will be really, really good. So I have um, my ice cream scoop here, and I really like using this for these snowball cupcakes because it, it gives them like that perfect round top. Um, so this is a standard size scoop. This is, I believe, um, three tablespoon scoop. Um, so I just fill it like most of the way and then just pop it on top like that. And look at that. It makes such a perfect little round top for your cupcake. So I should have got a glass bowl for this. That would have been easier. But I'll try to hold it up like this so you guys can see. Oops. So you just kind of tilt it a little bit so that you can get the coconut right onto the sides of the cupcake. And then I'm just rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling it along until it's completely coated. And you don't need to really push down or anything like that. Just give like a gentle pressure and just get that fluffy <laughs> pink coconut all over it. <laughs> I love that. I think that looks really good. <laughs> it really reminds me of the Tasty Cakes that used to come out every year at this time of year, the pink coconut marshmallow chocolate cake snowballs um, that were always such a fun springtime treat. So that's pretty much it. I'll do one more just so you guys can see. How are we doing on time? Oh, this is our short one today. That's okay. So here I have another one. Let's do another one really quick. Um, I left my whisk in here. I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> maybe I was thinking I might have to re-whip it again, but it's still really fluffy. So here it is, Italian meringue buttercream on a chocolate cupcake. This is the best chocolate cupcake recipe, by the way. 
everybody tells me so too. I know I'm biased, but I did, there are like hundreds of comments on that recipe post saying this is the best chocolate cake recipe. I will never make another ch chocolate cake recipe again after making this. So toot toot, I'm tooting my horn. <laughs> It's a good one. Definitely check it out. Bakingmoment.com. Simply perfect chocolate cupcakes. And there we have it. Oh, these are just so cute. <laughs> I love them. They're so cheerful. Especially on a great day. I love the pink topping. Oh, right? It's just really bright for today. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't go through and like demonstrate it, but obviously with the other two bags you would do the same thing with yellow and blue or you know I think mint green would be really pretty yeah. too or even like lavender would be really nice I love the color contrast between lavender and like a dark chocolate cupcake we should cut into one of these let's try it just so you can see I'll take the paper off um, and these are really cute too if you can find those pastel Cupcake papers. This is like all we had when I was a little kid was the pastel ones. <laughs> I just, I don't know, it's nostalgic. I love it. Let me see if I can break it open without making a mess. Nope, I'm just going to bite it. <laughs> love it! It's so good! It's so good, you guys! Love it. See how it... See how it looks inside? Really dark and moist. Such a great contrast with coconut and marshmallow. Yum. You gotta try it. So are there any questions before I sign off for the day? Um, I think we should most of them. Um, you know, you said you, you already answered about the chocolate cupcakes mm -hmm. and um, lots of happy faces. Aww. Lots of happy faces. <laughs> um, Good. So I know she loves your happy dance and you're making her hungry. So. I'll have to bring, I'm going to see Zainab next week. I'll have to try and bring some coconut cupcakes. I don't know if that's actually feasible, but I'll buy a coconut cupcake when I see you next week. It might week. not last that? that long. Yeah, Sorry. really. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Zainab. Thanks to everybody for watching. Thank you so much for clicking over. And again, if you need the recipe for the snowball cupcakes, they're on bakingamoment.com. Just search at the top window. Just search snowball cupcakes and you'll have all the info you need. Um, but if you do run into any questions or issues, just feel free to comment either here on this live or on the post itself. And I'll get back to you right away with whatever, try to help you however I can. Um, so thanks again. Thanks for joining me and oh I should mention I won't be doing a live next week like I mentioned just a little bit ago I'm gonna be traveling next week I have a conference in California so I won't be around at our usual time um, but we'll be back the following week same time same place <laughs> so look out for a heads up for me I'll definitely um, put something up to let you know what we're going to be making and when to tune in. Well, it'll be Thursday at 11. That's pretty much our time, but I'll give you a heads up what we're going to be making and hopefully I'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks so much.